Welcome to the Life is an Escape Room podcast, where learning about yourself is an adventure. Here's your hosts, the Eans Escape Leets, Chris and Jeff. Hello, fellow Escape Leets. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Chris. And I'm Jeff. And we'd like to welcome our guest, Allison Lederman. Uh, Allison, can you tell us something about yourself? Yeah, hi, good morning. Uh, thank you for, for having me on. Uh, my name is Allison Laterman. I am the managing partner and founder of Laterman Laporte Law here in Orlando, Florida. And we are a Central Florida law firm, but we practice throughout the state of Florida, helping medical providers obtain the most benefits for their practice. Great. Aww, I love Thanks. it. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, our escape room journey, if you will, started in Orlando. Really? What All were right. some of the first ones you did? Yes. Yeah, well, it was our daughter's twenty uh, first birthday. I think it was at Escapology. Um, yeah, you know the funny that was my first, first room. That we did same, <laughs> same. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, it, oh, that's in, funny. Like 2014, 2015, they were kind mm -hmm. of the start. I think of all of it around here for the most part, um, and that's yeah. actually how we started as well. My team looked at me and said, "Let's go play for Boss's Day," and they took me out. <laughs> and from the very first room, we were we were hooked. I mean, it was so that was our yeah. very first room as well. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, so awesome. you started it as a team thing. We did. So it, it was right off the bat. It yeah. was. And it and we're obviously we'll probably go more into this later, but it 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 definitely evolved as a process. And it was funny as, as a as a boss at the time, I was an attorney in a nationwide firm. So my team was just a paralegal and a legal assistant at the time. Um, and that position within about a year and a half turned into a department head where I now had 15 members on a team. Mm. Um, and yet my core team would still go, hey, let's go, let's go play. Um, but as we went to play, we realized it was more than that. And each of us were able to develop differently um, based on the skills that we've learned in the escape room. And myself, even as a leader, I can see where I had changed from how I approached the room and was able to take a step back and go, oh, I can apply that in my business also. And so it was <laughs> it was really fascinating to watch that evolution, um, which still continues today with more people and, and different teams. And we've done it remotely during COVID as well as back in person and that type of stuff. So it's, I've yeah. always found it to be a useful and fascinating practice where everybody goes, oh, you're just playing. And I'm like, well, it doesn't hurt to play with your team, right? But it's more than just playing, <laughs> right? When you really take a step back, yes. people think I'm crazy when I say, no, it, there's really a psychological and a leadership component to this. If you, if you just take that moment to Absolutely. go, oh, that's what's really at work here. You know, it's more than just mm -hmm. locks and keys, um, but that can apply both in your, your individual growth uh, as well as your team growth. And that's really a lot of what I found, you know, through this process. So we love it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, and I know we've both found uh, huge growth in our emotional intelligence over the last few years by doing these with intention. Yes. So, hey, let's dive in. Sure. Um, so we'll start with maybe the topic of how, to, how do escape rooms teach you to be a better team player? And then we can go from there. Absolutely. It's, it's funny because you really get to see how your team interacts and then you can help encourage them in different ways, depending on what role you take in the room. And so mm -hmm. originally when I started doing the room, I didn't know what I was doing in the first room. We're like, we're going to go play. And I had this, they looked to me to be the main doer at first. Right. And so my team would look at me to say, okay, well here you figure it out. And they'd work kind of with me, but they kind of let me lead the way. And over time, our team evolved through the practice where I became much more of the scout position where I could say, oh, I see a lock with five letters and a lock with four letters. And I was able to guide the path, but I wasn't the one doing anymore necessarily. Mm. I still do, but not as much so that they could do and that they could accomplish. And so they felt more part of that team environment where it's like, Oh, they just didn't rely on me. It, it, you could definitely see the empowerment and the delegation type of thing transitioning yeah. through there. And so that really helped the team as a whole. What was, what's also fascinating that we've seen over time is you figure out who everybody's strengths and preferences are and skills mm -hmm. in communication, but also problem solving. I remember one of our, probably about our fourth or fifth room, and it was about five or six of us in there. And 
I'm not, I know you guys enjoy the horror genre. Not my thing. I am, I am an easy scare person. If my husband were to walk through that door, I would, I would startle. I, I am that person. And so, cause I'm just so in my brain most of the time that mm-hmm. I, I'm aware of my surroundings, but not. And so it's very easy to, to startle me because I'm here, not here sometimes. Yeah. And so we're, we're doing this room and, and it's a darker room. And the woman at the time who was my legal assistant at this moment, we realized, we might've been underutilizing her skills and gifts as she looked around the whole room and there were letters and plus signs and minus signs for the letters. And she's like, Oh, I got this because apparently she was an expert at math and she could quickly do that. She literally without wow. paper just went, Da-da-da-da-da. okay, it's 27 and four and just started rattling off the number and wow. was right. And we all just went, wow. I think, I think we've got new skills for you to use when we get back to the office. There you go. And so the team was like, oh, wow. we can come to her for those types of things in the work that we do. Um, and so it was interesting because that team relationship definitely changed both in the room and out of the room because then we were able to see and they were able to communicate with each other in different, in different yeah. ways. Um, and there is a strength to playing with each other also, right? It's, it's law is incredibly stressful as you know, right? <laughs> in different, in a different mm-hmm. way, but it's, it's not, not stressful for sure. And lots of deadlines and lots of different energy coming from different places. And when the team can get together and share that same space and the same goal, you can translate that into your business and try to make yeah. work a bit more fun also. Yes. I, and that was it for me. There was a click for me where the practice of law can be pretty tedious, right? And the business of law is a whole whole different thing as a lawyer. And for me personally, I was able to take a look and say, oh, what I'm trying to accomplish is, and I can see the path and whatever. And as soon as I started treating Mm -hmm. that practice like an escape room that I enjoy, I started to enjoy my practice more because I was like, Mm, yeah, yeah. there was, there was like this moment that it just clicked where I was like, oh, There's the Ah. lock, there's, you know, there's the the hypothetical lock and the key Uh, mm -hmm. and the journey that I need to get to. Um, It was definitely more like a less linear room, right? Where it's everybody's working in different places, but the goal Mm -hmm. is, is to get out, right? Or to accomplish whatever it is. And our team got really good after playing enough times together that whatever our goal ended up being in work, we would all kind of come together in that way of, okay, here's where we're trying to get to. Who sees the path? Who sees the locks? Who sees the keys? And who wants to help open the different doors as we did that path together? Um, and it's been fascinating. How often do you how often do you take the team out to do escape rooms together? Prior to COVID, we would go probably about three, four times a year. We try to do once a quarter. So if, nice. if um, yeah. we had met our goals financially and we knew, I was like, all right. And it, I, like I said, I was at a nationwide firm. I mean, we're talking hundreds and yeah. hundreds of lawyers. And I'm like, uh, lunch day, let's go. And we would we would go to a room and grab lunch together. But then we would talk about it for hours afterwards and just go, oh, it was fascinating mm-hmm. how they how they did that. You know, and it was almost like they didn't realize we were training at work at the same time as, <laughs> as playing, right? Yeah. And, and that's the joy of it, I think, is mm-hmm. if you really get into it and you enjoy it for what it is, but then as a boss or a leader, you see the value of taking a step back and playing, but also going, Yes. Who's doing what? How are they talking mm-hmm. to each other? Does this person enjoy doing the room, like the piece alone? Do they want to work yeah. with the rest of the team? Are they the one calling out the shots? Are they the one actually physically manipulating the puzzles? Does this one like numbers? Does this one like the letters? Does this one like the logic? Mm-hmm. I hate logic puzzles. I had one teammate. <laughs> she loved them. She's like, bring it on. She just jumped right in front. She's like, I got this. And so that's how you see your team develop though. It's like, I know where my strength and weaknesses are. My teammates got to learn about themselves in a way that showed their strength and weaknesses. And so we as a team were able to come together and say, I got you on the stuff I know you don't enjoy or or, Mm -hmm. or your perceived weakness, um, but it's my strength. And so we were able to kind of support each other as a team and buffer each other in that way where they do the things that they really enjoy and they're good at. And they knew to be able to communicate, I need help with this task, puzzle, Mm -hmm. activity, and knew because of this process that they could rely on their teammates to, to come to the table and really help them through it. So that's why I find it incredibly valuable. During COVID, it was a bit different. So it ended up being, we found some really good ones, um, funny enough, from Canada. 
really, mm -hmm. really interactive oh, ones. Right. Um, I yep. don't want it. We know which ones you're talking okay, about. Okay, you do, yeah. right? Okay, and they're highly immersive. <laughs> I mean, you're going, I want to go yes. to Canada oh, to do it, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's fascinating is they give you the pieces. You know, the person's got the camera and they go through the mm -hmm. room, but they also have the pieces and they did a brilliant job of saying, this is what it actually looks like. So you can see it mm -hmm. and your team could go, oh, I can manipulate the puzzle from here because people see things yeah. differently. And on audio right. video, it's very different than when it's you're in front. Some people are very tactile. I, I tend to be, Absolutely. I got to touch it. I got to yeah. feel it. I got to see it. Mm -hmm. I've got others that are like all day long. They can just, you know, play with whatever they can hear. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So it was a, it was a different experience. And people that my, my business partner who was with me at my last firm tends to be very quiet. And he's the one that, uh, he, he kind of does his own thing for the most part, right? He, he gets in, he knocks it out and he works with the team, but he's, he's not the, I'm the very vocal one, right? <laughs> he's the quiet mm -hmm. one. And, and he's, uh, he just kind of gets in and does it. He's definitely much more the doer. And I build the process for the team to kind of complement and supplement each other to kind of move forward as a whole. And it was funny because we're doing this room during, during COVID we did, everybody got Grubhub lunches. We ate together on video and then we joined, you know, this oh, hour long escape. And we all got stuck and it got quiet and he just piped up like, oh, here's the answer. We're like, <laughs> look at you joining the party. <laughs> um, so it, it was fun because he actually got to play with them where play is not his personality. That's not his default. He's very, yeah. he's very deadpan. He's very funny, but he's very deadpan. So unless you get that sense of humor and that that's how he communicates, uh -huh. it, it's, it's, it can be a bit off-putting unless you know what you're getting. And my team over the time, because we've been able to play together, they're like, oh, that's just how he communicates. It's not that it's wrong. It's a little bit, it's different than everybody else, but it's not bad. You just, you yeah. just learn to communicate with, you know, you kind of come together as a team where everyone is. And then you yeah, figure yeah. out, well, do we want to work together and how are we going to work together and who is most comfortable in what areas that we can complement them and help everybody accomplish yeah. what it is we're trying to do. Oh well, my you, gosh, so you have many an lessons here. Yeah, <laughs> well, and you have an interesting perspective here because you did them both in person and remotely and everybody's having a challenge now with telework and remote. How would you describe the difference between a, a remote team experience and an in-person? What were the different lessons that you learned? Um, so like I said, part of it is learning who receives information best in which ways. So those of us that are a bit more tactile, it's a bit harder doing it remote, um, but it was mm -hmm. still fun. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges of remote is, is silencing all of this, right? So it's, it's making sure your phones are off and that you are engaged in the camera with your team, you know, doing the thing. And so we did, st we were still able to accomplish that. We did quite a few. We probably did about three or four that way. Um, one of which I had already done previously in person. And didn't tell my team because they really wanted to do it. They're like, we don't want to do it if you've done one before. But it was such a good room. I'm like, I was curious to see how it translated remotely. So I've actually done the same room in person with a team and remotely with a different team. And so, hmm. yeah. So to answer the question on that, mm -hmm. I saw the things that they weren't able to make work remotely that they took out. And they were the pieces I think I enjoyed a lot more, <laughs> right, in person because it was one of those that it wasn't a key to escape. It was an activity. Um, mm -hmm. and, it, and in person with the original team that I did it with many years ago, it was at, um, it wasn't escapology, uh, escape game, Orlando. So another one of the big oh, ones, right, right. right. And I, I, yeah, I like yeah. a lot of mom and pop ones, but there's certain things that are reliability that once you go to a certain company, you go, okay, the quality of the immersion is there, right? Their immersion yes. is you walk mm -hmm. in, you know, and I think to, to answer your question, Jeff, to go back to it is this, for me to keep me here with everybody, it helps that it's fully immersive. If I am in the room, mm -hmm. I, like I said, I, you'll jump scare me, but I am in that room and I am there. Mm -hmm. And remotely, it can be a bit different. But thankfully, the ones we did remote were highly immersive to where you're just fat. You're looking around going, I need to go to Canada, right? <laughs> like, this, is, <laughs> this is amazing what they put together. Yep. And so I was more fascinating watching the pieces and watching my team just kind of talk yeah. through it and, hey, go here and go there. And it was interesting to watch them. This is one of the biggest differences. Give directions to someone they've never met remotely mm -hmm. to accomplish the task mm -hmm. they wanted accomplished. 
And so yeah. it was funny because at that point we were all remote as a, as a firm. So we had been at a law firm in Orlando where we all had office space and we were all together doing the typical law firm. And in that almost three years that we were out, my team ended up being more productive financially. I mean, we doubled our revenue yeah. in a year mm -hmm. by being home. And it wasn't just mm -hmm. the flexibility. They had learned to work together as a team and give directions remotely to each other mm -hmm. and follow it and trust each other that to know that they were going to do it and accomplish it. And so it, it, these, you know, I think the remote rooms really helped them with that process where they, they knew they could give an assignment to somebody else that maybe they hadn't met before and execute yeah. the task at hand and still have it. And I don't think they realized it to that level, but I could, I could see it as the, as the boss kind of behind the scenes, putting all the pieces together. And I hate calling it a boss. Like they all, they kiddingly call me their frost. So I'm their friend boss. Um, Cause I genuinely <laughs> care about my team. That's right. Funny. I, I yeah, I, I'm their frost. <laughs> I'm like, it's, so I don't like being called the boss, so awesome. but I, I like, I like being part of the team, right? We don't really look at yeah. it as a hierarchy. Yeah. It's more of, we all move together and it's a team it is a team and everybody's yeah. got different yeah. tasks within the team that they need to accomplish but i can't do what i do without everybody else doing what they do right and yeah and that escape rooms are crucial in that because if somebody's just sitting there and you really needed six hands on deck to do something it's not getting done without one person going absolutely crazy running back and forth across the room to get yeah. especially when you get to those physical mm -hmm. challenges and there's a lot of what we do that can can be very similarly related to that. And so back to the firm where this has really helped, we transitioned to remote. Um, my team wanted to stay remote and the firm we were in, mm -hmm. the owner of that firm very much needed the energy of humans being around him or he wasn't productive. Yeah. And he and I had very different um, leadership strategies. We'll just say we, we just didn't, we just had different <laughs> ways of, 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 um, working with a team or not working with a team. So mm -hmm. for us, I ended up starting my own firm in November of this year and took, because we were kind of like two separate law firms in a main firm anyway. So we mm -hmm. just went, okay, and we've gone fully remote. So this is, this is my home office with my artwork on the wall, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I love thank it. You. I was like, and this is, this is our space. And so mm -hmm. we are local, right. But we all work from our own spaces. And so as a team, we get together and we just did like last Friday, um, we had a team breakfast for um, admin professional week, right? So we got we got together and we did that as a team. Um, and so I think we'll go back to doing in-person rooms again. But it's because it's a new firm and we've been so busy, we haven't had time to, to play play yet. But I know we want to because yeah. we actually genuinely enjoy doing that together. And so we've learned to work remotely like that remote room uh, or rooms that we did, which has been great and still come together. But there is there is a joy and a bit more fun for me being in the same space because it is a different energy than than when we do this on video. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the biggest changes or challenges between in person versus remote. You can still do the thing, right? It's just how you all mm -hmm. kind of interact out of it and what you get out of it. And if you really can commit to we're doing this and we're doing it on video, as opposed to okay, yeah. we're in a room. And it's all decorated in that room. Like, you know, if I had just even turned around and went, okay, now I'm out of, I'm out of my escape room, <laughs> you know, and now right. I'm back in yeah. it. It's very different than when you're, you're just in it. So yeah, I, yeah. I think that's probably the biggest thing, but you can still get the same skills, right? You can, you can still get very Absolutely. similar experiences if you use it that way and you make it play and you make it fun, but you also take that step back a little bit as, as a leader and as a boss and all of those other things and just kind of go, oh, I see, I see the stuff you enjoy. Let's mm -hmm. see if we can add more of that in what we're already doing so that work is less of a chore and becomes yes. much more of that like goal achievement. Because a lot of escape rooms, yeah. it's really, I don't know if it's the dopamine, like that instant gratification thing, but you go, oh, I solved the thing. I did the thing. Mm -hmm. I opened the box. I made it to the next. Yep. And that's a big, so I know I'm skipping to the end. Sorry. I think... <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I think that's a big thing for a lot of leaders to learn, right, is mm -hmm. we all do well with that little bit of gratification. And whether it's a sense of accomplishment or a bit of praise mm -hmm. of knowing I accomplished this task, this activity, this thing, this, you know, team building exercise, and I've accomplished something and move forward, there's a value to that. 
Uh, and I think that's Absolutely. a huge thing out of escape rooms that once you realize, because I know I, my husband hates escape rooms. He, he will do them on occasion. No. It is not his I'm thing. judging. I'm judging. I know. He's a wonderful man. He'll do them for me. <laughs> but he'd prefer to sit in the lobby and then hear me get all excited about it later. But for him, <laughs> that's not his thing. But my son and I started doing them when he, he's now 17. We started when he was about 10. And so the ladies from my mm. office were like, bring Sam, bring, bring the kid. And mm. so now there's a bunch of lawyers in the community that I don't work with. They're like, bring the kid because he so he figures out the ones and he's taking <laughs> but he's taking my role he'll look at it and go yeah. hey guys um, i think you just need to do mm-hmm. blah 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 and then let them do the work and i'm like Ooh. Uh-huh. <laughs> i'm like you yeah. are my kid learning from mom learning from mom yep. so you know he's yeah. he's always been good about not taking from other people's hands or getting in the way but he's learned to adapt and to communicate and yeah. and that's been a big thing wow. for him as a quiet kid um he's he, he's his only child and mm-hmm. he's always played with adults and he's always worked well mm-hmm. with adults. And so even yeah. as like a 10 year old in the escape room, right. Mm-hmm. He just, mm-hmm. he never thought, Oh, I'm the kid in the room. He just was like, mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to help you guys accomplish your goal together. Yeah. Like he just, I'm here too. I'm here too. Yeah. And, and he would be very quiet and then would just sneak up and be like, um, this is what it is. And you're like, how did you know that? Um, so yeah, he's, <laughs> it's been fun watching him grow as a person though, through the rooms. And so, if he and I need like a mommy day, we just, we'll just go do an escape room together. So we've done a lot of rooms, Aww. just the two of us. And they usually look at us, especially when he was, he's short. Uh, I'm short. Mm-hmm. I'm five one and he's now five three, but he was much shorter than that. And we'd walk in and they're like, this woman and this kid, like what? And then we break the, you know, then we get out with 15 <laughs> minutes left and they're like, what did you do? Wow. I'm like, yeah. We just played. We just played. You know? yeah. And so I think that's helped us, though, with our communication with each other, though, too, because absolutely, yeah, it's learning how to give and take instructions both ways. Right. And so he's yeah. having to communicate things to me in a way that I'm going to understand and be like, oh, like there's definitely those moments where I'm like, oh, that's what you meant. He's like, yes. So I'm like, yeah. OK. Mm-hmm. And then it helps me not give direction and like boss him around like you need to do this. Mm-hmm. But it's right. much more of like okay, I think this is whatever. And we talk through it together and say, what do you think this is doing? Uh, and so we, it's really strengthened our relationship to be able to play and figure out the puzzles yeah. as well as a family. Um, and like I said, my husband's oh, done yeah. a few with us and he's great when he's in there. He just doesn't enjoy them the way I do, right? So Aww. he's good at the puzzles and that it's just not- I suppose we'll you know. forgive him. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll let him. He's played some. Oh, he's, he's played he's some. definitely played some. And you know what, to his credit, <laughs> He drove my brother, he drove all of us out to Clearwater for like a two and a half normal drive, which took four oh, and a half hours yeah, yeah, yeah. For in the mm-hmm. middle of a week, about a, about a month or two ago, so that we could do two of the, the most known ones in Orlando, right. uh, in Central mm-hmm. Florida. We know what you're right? talking okay, about. So yeah, yeah, we know what's going <laughs> It's where we found the book, right? And so yep, yep. Um, he was like, I will just drop you off. I will come get you in an hour and a half. And we're like, Aww. okay, you know. Oh, but, yeah. but he was excited to hear all about it. Like he likes to hear oh. that we had fun and that we, he just doesn't get the same thing out of it. And the funny thing is he's, he's a great leader. His teams love him. He's incredibly nurturing. Um, he's great at communicating, yeah. but the, mm-hmm. the rooms are just not his, they're just not his thing. Yeah. yeah. But, they're but they've worked for everyone. Made, you know, they've. Yeah. No, that, oh yeah. Now. Do you, oh, go ahead, Chris. Uh, Chris, go well, ahead. <laughs> before we wrap up, yeah. um, I, I did want to call out a couple of things. There's so many lessons here, um, but but the two in particular. So my, in my work with leaders, I often see, uh, I'm sure you have as well, right? The, the brand new leader promoted, they get promoted because of their technical skills. So they tend to want to do all the work. Right. And I love how you called out how escape rooms help you learn to step back, mm-hmm. right? And kind of be a guide for the group. Mm-hmm. And then it, it uncovers some amazing things. They're able to shine. They're empowered. You can exactly. see some skills that you couldn't see before. And then, of course, you have more free time to uh, to lead instead of do yourself, right? And, and there's a big difference. <laughs> one, that, I love that well, one. And there's a big yeah. difference between empowering and delegating. Mm-hmm. So right. exactly. And, and I think escape rooms help you with that because if, if, if you yeah. as a leader come in, and instead of bossing people through the room of you need to do this and whatever, but you say, I see these things and they go, I see it too. Let me try yeah. that. Yes. Please do. Right. right. And if you yeah. need me, I'm here to assist and guide mm. you. But I want to see them play and try to figure it yeah, out because absolutely. you grow through that process. Right. right? It's like little exactly. kids, right? Does the circle fit in the square? No. Does the triangle fit in the square? No. 
Unless you watch that one video that gives everybody anxiety and everything fits in the square, but that's that's not real life. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but the okay. other the other thing I wanted to call out too, which I love, um, what you said earlier about how you looked at your job differently, mm-hmm. right? You looked right. at it as an escape room, and it's amazing how when we maybe we're frustrated with a situation or a relationship or something like that, and then we choose to look at it differently and all of a sudden everything changes. It does. I think that's another huge lesson there. Perspective is huge in escape rooms and in life, right? So you can look at a puzzle and stare at it for 10 minutes, but unless you change maybe the angle or how you're approaching it or the pieces that you were using to try to solve it and you go, oh, I didn't need the red pieces. I needed the green pieces (laughs) from over here, you know, type of scenario. It takes that shift in perspective, uh, in perspective, and the same thing in life and in jobs. And so you could say, oh, oh you know, and you look down, 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 but you go, wait a minute, if I treat it in this way, and I give myself kind of those internal rewards that go along with with seeing in that perspective, mm-hmm. it changes everything for you. And it, and it was a yeah. big shift for me where I was like, oh, my career is an escape room, and that's the stuff. And it, and it <laughs> there was funny. You go. And, it, and it was funny because right. I told it to my last firm's marketing company. They're like, "You like escape rooms?" I said, "I love escape rooms." And she's like, "Why?" I said, <laughs> "Well, I just realized that my law, my practice of law is like an escape room. Clients yes. come to me with a goal in mind, right? And mm-hmm. how are we going to accomplish that goal? And there's often many different ways and lots of different lots of different locks and keys that will get you there." Yep. Um, but sometimes there are other blocks that go in there, right? I need it in this Mm -hmm. cost, right? Within this cost, within this timeframe, here's the jurisdiction you're, and the more I looked at it, it's all just a big puzzle piece, right? (laughs) There you go. (laughs) You've got a judge, you've got an opposing counsel, you've got the end result of whatever you're trying to accomplish. You've got the case law, you've got how your client may or may not look in testimony, depending on what the issue Mm -hmm. is. You've got how the other side may or may not look. And so you go, all right. If I have to shift these puzzle pieces, you know, what is what is the perception? What is it going to look like when I'm done? Yeah. And you're trying to figure out that exit strategy. And so when I approached it like that, it was no longer like, oh, no, I got to set this deposition and I've got to do yeah. this discovery, but more like it's powerful. It's powerful. Where you go. Yeah. How do yeah. I make it to that? That's the image I want. Yeah. So. Yeah. So um, this is the perfect time, that perfect lead in to your 60 second um, advertisement for what you do, let people know how to get a hold of you, that kind of thing. Sure. Um, so you can visit our website at www.llfla, so Laterman Laporte, Florida.com, mm-hmm. um, or our phone number is 407 676 5544. And we are in the business of helping businesses be the best versions of, of themselves. And so we work a lot with medical providers um, and we handle everything from insurance claims to whatever else comes up that they have to deal with. Um, we take a very holistic approach to really taking that escape room view, right? We, we try to address mm-hmm. the whole issue because a lot of times, just like perspective that we talked about, what you think is the issue when you start peeling back the layers isn't really the issue. And so it's a different yeah. approach, it's a different perspective and a different way of addressing the problems. And that's actually what we're known for. So we really do look at the whole picture. I am also a certified mediator in addition to a 20 plus mm-hmm. year lawyer uh, here in, in Florida. And so we take that whole approach to helping our clients accomplish not only what they think they want, but what they actually need. Nice. Right. So. Well, well, you almost had your final statement, but what's your <laughs> final piece of what's your final piece of advice? What 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 would you uh, recommend? Like for in particular on team building, let's use that on as team, a, yeah. But you know, on team building, the biggest thing is listen to what your team is telling you, but also watch it what they're doing, because that can be two very different things, and it's both in the practice of what you're doing and in an escape room, right? You you can see them talking to each other. And if they're handling it in one way, that's something very different than what they're physically doing together. And so you've got to watch and listen and be able to approach it. And if you take whatever it is you're doing with an element of fun, I feel like Mary Poppins, right? Like spoonful of sugar, but but it really <laughs> is. Right? Hope Disney doesn't sue me for that. But, um, <laughs> but, but you do, if you take it with an element of fun, it makes the stress of what you're doing a little bit less, right? It, it doesn't yeah, feel quite right. as heavy. Um, and helping your team regain a, a different shift in perspective as they're taking on something more challenging, I think you're going to have a better result at the end. 
So it is worth yeah. taking awesome. that time to do that. Oh, uh, awesome, amazing advice. Good. And this has been a fun conversation. Yeah, Thank you so much. My Allison. pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Want to learn more about the Eans Escape Leads, buy the book or read the blog? Visit lifeisanescaperoom.com. Thank you.